Today's event honoring Doug Church is hosted by the Indiana Bar Foundation. And for those of you who may not be familiar, the foundation has a mission of strengthening and expanding civil justice and civil education right here in Indiana. The foundation also seeks to promote excellence in the legal profession. And one way they do this is by giving the Legendary Lawyer Award annually to an individual who is committed to legal ethics, community involvement, public service, and lawyer professionalism. Doug certainly upholds those qualities. Before we get started, the foundation would like to thank Church Church Hiddle and Antrim for sponsoring this afternoon's celebration. And we also want to give a quick reminder about Zoom etiquette. A little different, but we're all navigating Zoom etiquette in 2020. So again, please keep your microphone muted while others are speaking. And if you'd like to congratulate or send a message to Doug, please type it in the chat box. It's usually to the right of your screen and we'll make sure that he sees all of those messages. If you post about the event on social media, please do tag the Indiana Bar Foundation. Their handle is at IN Bar Foundation on both Twitter and Facebook. The foundation is also recording this ceremony and we will post it on YouTube for you to watch later. And of course you can share it with others who may not be able to be a part of today's honor. Many of you may not know, but today is a very special day in Noblesville, Indiana. Today is Leadership Day in honor of Doug Church. And I'd like to introduce Matt Light, the Deputy Mayor of Noblesville, who is going to read the official Leadership Day proclamation. Matt, this is always a fun thing, and especially to do it for Doug Church, who's been such a huge part of the Noblesville community. Absolutely, and thank you very much, Nicole. It's a, <clears throat> a privilege to be here today to uh, honor and congratulate Doug for all of his service and his accomplishments. Um, glad to have been a, a fellow Noblesville uh, resident uh, since 2007, and I've known Doug uh, for about the past 10, uh, 12 years. Got to know Doug through some of his uh, efforts with the State uh, Bar Association, as well as uh, along with uh, Attorney General Carter, um, some work on the tobacco uh, master settlement agreement uh, multi-state arbitration, which is a super complicated set of issues. So going into that with somebody uh, with the caliber of Doug uh, was certainly a helpful thing. So I am, um, again, honored to uh, read this proclamation. Uh, Mayor Jensen is traveling on fall break uh, with his family, uh, but he wanted to congratulate Doug and thank Doug, and uh, I'm honored to read this proclamation on, on Mayor Jensen's behalf. It's, uh, it's not a short one, so settle in, get comfortable. Uh, given all of Doug's accomplishments, um, that's certainly appropriate. Um, whereas Douglas Denton Church was admitted to the practice of law in 1970, and after a distinguished tenure as the first law clerk for the Honorable George B. Hoffman Jr., has been a litigator and partner for 50 years with the law firm of Church Church Hiddle and Antrim, which was founded in Noblesville in 1880. And whereas Doug has served the law firm as managing partner for more than 25 years and expanded its practice from a handful of lawyers in, in Hamilton County to almost 50 lawyers across the state of Indiana. And whereas Doug served as city attorney for Noblesville from 1988 to 1996, town attorney for the town of Fishers from 1980 to 2015, and has served many planning commissions, boards of zoning appeal and municipal corporations, the state of Indiana and countless clients with dignity, zealousness, professionalism, and skill on a vast array of legal matters, including medi mediation and arbitration over his lengthy career. And whereas Doug led Connor Prairie to a highly beneficial res resolution of arduous conflict and the independent existence Connor Prairie enjoys today by exhibiting principled advocacy, perseverance, and devotion to Connor Prairie. And whereas Doug's leadership in civic and charitable organizations extends throughout Hamilton County, Central Indiana, and across the country, as the president, founder, or chairperson of many organizations, including the Indiana State Bar Association, the Indiana Bar Foundation, the American Bar Association's House of Delegates, the American Board of Trial Advocates, the Indiana Municipal Lawyers Association, the United States Masters Swimming Endowment Fund, United Theological Seminary, Indiana University Law School Alumni Association, Indiana Continuing Legal Education Forum, 
the Connor Prairie Museum, the Hamilton County Leadership Academy, the Hamilton County Extension Service, the Greater Indianapolis YMCA Foundation, the Hamilton, Hamilton County Bar Foundation, the Hamilton County Progress Committee, and the Hamilton County Chamber of Commerce. And I think there were more, we just didn't have as much, any, any additional room to include in that section. And whereas Doug formed the Noblesville Adult Swim Team, a, com a competitive masters swimming team, and the Friends of Central Pool, a not-for-profit group, and together through a series of fundraising efforts and improvements, resurrected the, swim, the swimming pool structure located in Forest Park in Noblesville to a world-class swimming and diving championship facility, now known as the Forest Park Aquatic Center, home to many nationally recognized athletes. And whereas the American Board of Trial Advocates, a national association of experienced trial lawyers and judges dedicated to the preservation and promotion of a civil jury trial right provided by the 17th Amendment, inducted Doug into its membership and awarded him the rank of advocate. And whereas Martindale Hub Hubble uh, get, gave Doug its AV preeminent peer review rating, indicating the highest level of professional achievement and experience. And whereas the Indiana State Bar Foundation, a charitable organization dedicated to strengthening access to justice and appreciation for the rule of law in Indiana, has recognized Doug as a master fellow. And whereas the Indiana Court of Appeals has recognized Doug with a certificate of merit and appreciation. And whereas the American Bar Association has awarded Doug its Golden Key Award and the Indiana State Bar Association has awarded him with a certificate of merit. And whereas in recognition for all that Doug has accomplished through his 50 years of legal and volunteer service, the Indiana Bar Foundation will present Doug with its Legendary Lawyer Award for demonstrating professionalism, the higher standards of the legal profession, compassion through service to the public, and skills in the practice of law through a legal career of 50 years or more, and whose career commitments to legal ethics demonstrate the high calling and higher achievement of lawyers in modern society. Now, therefore, I, Matt Light, Deputy Mayor for the City of Noblesville, on behalf of Chris Jensen, the Mayor of Noblesville, recognize Doug Church's impact reaching people, not only in our community, but across the state, and do hereby proclaim October 15th, 2020 as Leadership Day in honor, in honor of Douglas Denton Church and the city of Noblesville. And I invite all citizens to duly note this occasion. Thank you, Doug, uh, for all of your service. And a Leadership Day indeed, uh, hearing all of Doug's um, accomplishments and most notably, Matt, I think you agree that it's his commitment to the community that truly is reflected today as we honor him as the legendary lawyer. I want to point out because again, this is a virtual conversation, a, vir a virtual um, honor for Doug Church that he is right there. You see See him on your screen. He's seated right next to Chuck Dunlap, president of the Indy Bar, Indiana Bar Foundation. Uh, Doug's waving with us. So again, he, he's, we're all together in this. Uh, we're just a little bit far distance wise. Uh, Matt, again, thank you for that. And please tell the mayor we said thanks as well. Uh, the next person who is going to help us honor Doug today is likely a very familiar person to many of you. Um, former Attorney General Steve Carter. Steve served as Indiana's Attorney General from 2000 to 2009, and we're very thankful that he made today a priority. Please welcome former Attorney General, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Nicole. It's really an honor for me uh, and fun to help celebrate and recognize Doug on this special uh, occasion. Um, you know, Matt kind of laid out so many things that Doug has done, but I wanted to focus on a couple of areas where he actually did a lot to help those who have the responsibility of administering state government. Uh, the first one is Connor Prairie. I see some Connor Fra Prairie friends on the, on the call here today. When I was attorney general, I received a call when I was at a meeting with other AGs around the country. I was in Oklahoma City and my staff told me there was this article on the front page of the Indianapolis Star about 29 of 33 board members of Connor Prairie being fired by Earlham College, the trustee of that property. Well, that was just the beginning of a multi-year uh, project and Doug and a few others, Ellen, uh, 
Rosenthal, Berkeley Duck, and a few others were key in making that situation turn out to be a good one. There were times when I think people involved in the controversy really wondered about the future of the museum, but it's truly a cultural gem for our state. And the Attorney General has responsibility for regulating not-for-profit activity. So we worked through that dispute, ultimately resolved it in a way that had changes in governance. Uh, Doug was key in developing those changes where we both had a foundation to administer the assets and then an operating board to deal with the administration day to day of the property. Also, there were real estate issues. I remember Doug was so kind to me when I wanted to get out and see the property uh, more than once. Uh, there had been many parcels granted by Mr. Lilly years ago, so there was different legal significance, practical significance for the museum at that time, but also in the museum's future. So he had good ideas, but he was always respectful that as a public official, I had some, well, I might have sympathies with a particular group, including that that Doug represented, that I had responsibilities to other folks too, so I appreciated that. Ultimately, the resolution led to record attendance at the new entity, a comfort level for donors that their money would be going to help Connor Prairie in the future. The other piece I want to mention, Matt touched on this too, was the master settlement agreement with the major tobacco companies. It's pretty complex, but it's a deal where the tobacco companies agree to pay in perpetuity the state of Indiana, and it's more than a hundred million dollars a year. And there had been, it's like many things in government, kind of different kinds of financing where the companies pay money to the state, they put somebody some aside for escrow, and then later they have the chance to argue that maybe the state didn't do everything exactly right, so they should get that money back. I was charged to develop a team that could defend Indiana in a controversy over 10 years of payments. So that's over a billion dollars. And while Indiana didn't win every issue that was disputed, the ultimate outcome was a settlement that ensured the security of that billion dollars. And in this day and age, when we look at the pandemic and the contemplate the needs for our public health systems going forward, I think that's really significant. And Doug and his team at Church, Churchill and Antrim were really key in presenting Indiana's arguments and helping lead us to that result. I just want to say on a personal basis, uh, Doug is somebody who has many skills, uh, but one of those I think is that he's a great listener. I think you can almost sense the intensity of his listening. And he's probably, he's had so much experience and heard so many of these issues before, he's probably quietly thinking, yeah, I know where this is headed, I know this, can, but he's always gonna hear somebody out completely. And I think that's why when he speaks, people pay attention because they know that he's taken everything in and he's respectful of all views. So I'm just here to say, thank you, Doug, on behalf of what you've done to help state officials when they've needed your help. It's played a major role in keeping uh, the arts community in Indiana and the public health uh, community where we need to be. And I look forward to working with you in the future, but more than that, I look forward to continuing to be friends with you. Thank you. Former Attorney General, Mr. Carter, thank you so much for your comments today. And I think that's noteworthy, um, uh, Mr. Carter, when you said, you know, Doug does listen. Um, and that really is a true signature of a leader. Um, and so it's, it's, it's obviously something that we've all experienced um, having a relationship with Doug Church. Our next speaker today has had a long relationship with Doug Church. And even though Berkeley Duck was at a different law firm than Doug has been at over the years, uh, they became close friends and confidants and work closely together to better our community. Uh, Berkeley is a retired partner of the law firm Ice Miller, located in downtown Indianapolis, so a little bit farther from Noblesville. Uh, but please welcome Berkeley Duck as he shares um, his memories in his honor of Doug Church. Thank you, Nicole. Um, 
It gives me a great deal of pleasure to participate in this recognition of Jug's service to the Indiana Bar, to the legal profession, and to the community. You're going to hear a little bit more about Connor Prairie, so please bear with me. Although I knew him uh, by reputation, our paths didn't cross until 1995 when we both joined the board of directors of Connor Prairie. Um, which, as Steve mentioned, was then under the trusteeship of Earlham College. Um, due to his commitment to the museum, his sound judgment and demonstrated leadership, Doug was elected, <clears throat> excuse me, as uh, board chairman in January of 1998. And it was at this point in time that latent concerns about Earlham's management of the museum and of the substantial endowment created for it by Eli Lilly, began to take visible shape. Doug and I had a number of conversations about the legal aspects of the relationship. And with his encouragement, I prepared an analysis of the terms of Mr. Lilly's gifts to Erlen. I shared that analysis with Doug. And over the succeeding months, he opened a dialogue with the president of the college, seeking a better understanding of its policies and Earlham's agreement to make certain changes in those policies. Earlham's responses to Connor Prairie's concerns led to the appointment by the board in June of 2000 of a governance committee, which was chaired by Doug and charged with the negotiation of a resolution of the issues. Over the next three years, and bear in mind, this is all volunteer time that Doug is giving to the community. He wisely and effectively guided that committee through a complex process in which it gradually gained better insights into Earlham's positions, developed confidence in its interpretation of the terms of Mr. Lilly's gifts, and worked to reform Earlham's management policies so as to better align with Mr. Lilly's intent. The process included a number of meetings with the Earlham management, which was now represented by legal counsel, to discuss the issues and ultimately to negotiation of the terms of the, the resolution. However, in June 2003, those negotiations culminated in an ultimatum from Earlham, demanding that Connor Prairie formally accede to Earlham's view of the relationship. Doug's summation in that meeting between the Earlham and Connor Prairie representatives of the nature of the legal relationship between Earlham and um, Connor Prairie, the terms of the Lilly gifts and the course of events that had led up to that point in the relationship and his articulation of the issues of equity and fairness presented by Earlham's proposal was one of the finest exercises of legal advocacy that I encountered during my career. Connor Prairie refused to agree to Earlham's terms, and Earlham responded by firing all of the members of the museum's board, along with its chief executive officer. Doug and the other former members of the Connor Prairie board then formed an advocacy organization, Save the Prairie Inc., to serve as the vehicle to pursue Connor Prairie's independence from Earlham. To make a long story short, Save the Prairie was successful in its efforts. After filing a lawsuit seeking an accounting by Earlham for its management of the Lilly gifts, Steve Carter was able to negotiate a settlement under which the endowment funds were divided between the college and the museum. And as of December 30, 2005, the museum became an independent entity having no continuing relationship with Earlham. It has since prospered beyond our most hopeful expectations. Doug and I worked side by side throughout the entire eight years of the Earlham governance dispute and thereafter on the establishment of the new Connor Prairie. I can attest that without Doug's keen legal mind, unfailing judgment and absolute devotion to Connor Prairie, that effort would not have succeeded. His volunteer service to Connor Prairie was in the best tradition of those of us fortunate to have practiced law Thank you, Doug, for your service and congratulations on this well-deserved honor.
Berkeley, there. thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and sharing a little bit more of that specific history with us as, as, as Doug was, and you were one of the ones who really fought to make Conner Prairie what it is today. And thank you. Uh, my children and I, we go there all the time. We absolutely love it. Um, so our final speaker today is Mary Sue Rowland. And Mary Sue, many of you know her as well, was the mayor of Noblesville from 1988 to 1996. She recorded her remarks, so we're going to play that video with her right now. Mr. Church, we are here to honor you and your family with this prestigious once-in-a-lifetime award. It must be said that no one has made a greater impact on Hamilton County and beyond these past five decades than you. During those early years, cities and towns were exploding with opportunity as Hamilton County became the fastest growing county in the state with the highest per capita income. Doug, you led the charge. The result was quickly all three of the largest areas in Hamilton County were counted in the top five cities and towns in the state. Others say Doug Church has the greatest insight, the greatest passion, and the greatest humility. His peers say Doug Church is giving and kind and generous, spending a lifetime of contributing to improving the legal profession his community, and the state. I can add to that that Doug's influence has also gone further, including national and international accomplishments. His benchmarking process, making elected officials accountable through review standards and planning on the long term, went as far as France and across the United States, again, award-winning. I never heard Doug say in a municipal meeting or in any meeting, I'll get back to you on that. He always had the answers to help the mayors and councils, along with citizens, make good decisions for their communities. Well, think of this. The day after Doug and Kathy were married, they moved into their home in Old Town Nobisville because they were sure Nobisville had opportunity and potential. The year was 1966. Passing the bar in 1970 began an adventure. It was confirmed there was potential and opportunity in Hamilton County. The church family set about their work, including children and grandchildren, following in the family footsteps. Doug took a 50-year-old and abandoned county swimming pool in Forest Park in Nobisville, and with volunteers and a passion, he built an Olympic swimming pool for the community with an Olympic diving tower and well. He remembered the little kid pool and the spray park and the fast city slide, and the complex is still supported by volunteers today, just it was in the beginning some 30 years ago. Doug is a national medal winner in master swimming and diving, so he knew how to build a sustainable Olympic pool. Find enough for the local Olympians and future Olympians for years to come. Doug connected a community foundation to Hamilton County that now has a worth of $825 million, helping to serve all, providing opportunity and inspiration. He saved 38 miles of the Nickel Plate Rail Line from Tipton to 10th Street in Indianapolis, and the list goes on and on. The Legendary Lawyer Award goes to a legendary leader. Douglas D. Church has given 50 years of service to his profession, and to his never-ending desire to do more every day for others. And I say, where is the time gone? It is you, Doug, that has made Nobisville, Fishers, and Carmel what it is today. 
not you alone, but you have a way of gathering people to join you no matter what the project. No longer the three cities and towns are in the top five cities in the state, but now are in the top five cities in the nation. Dad, you are legendary. I think you would have made a great president of the United States. I always thought that. But we're all very happy that you stayed right here next to all of us and shared your talent and your vision to make us the best we could be. Thank you from the 360,000 people who now call Hamilton County home. They may not know your name, but they know they're in a special place. Now, after five decades of service, there's just one more thing to do. It's time to write a book. I have a title, How to Succeed Beyond Expectation and Make Friends Along the Way. Douglas D. Church, you are a legendary fellow, and your work is legendary as well. From all your friends that you have made along the way, thank you, Doug. If the world could be filled with many more like you, what a great place it would be. Well, save me a copy of your new book, signed, of course, and we'll see you around the historic Courthouse Square in downtown Nobisville. Take care. That was incredible. And I think one of the lines that, that got me, and I know got a lot of you too, and I see, I see the clapping there. A uh, little emotional as well, just because you could tell how uh, much enthusiasm and how much um, passion she had in the words that she was sharing and specifically Doug I have to say that you know knowing you for just a short amount of time thus far but I really did love this line you know the people in Hamilton County may not know your name but they know they are in a special place wow what a line indeed we do have one more surprise for you Doug so one short video there are a lot of people who want to say congratulations today I want to say thank you for everything that you've done um, for them and for this community and so we tried to grab some of them and put it in a quick video and we need to share that right now too hi Doug this is your sister Anne and you've always been legendary to us we're so happy for you very proud of you congratulations hey Doug middle sister Pat uh, you are the best big brother ever. You're so generous and we want to congratulate you on this newest award. You are legendary. Hi Doug, this is baby sister Deb and so proud of you and you are so deserving of all awards. Congratulations. And I'm so proud of all your years of service and leadership. Hey Deb. Uh, 50 years of service to your clients, your community, your profession. Super proud of you. Congratulations. Dad. Granddad, we're so proud. Even Herman is proud. Your commitment to making Indiana better is legendary. Congratulations. Congratulations. And congratulations. Who would have thought that little Riley kid would grow up one day to be Indiana's legendary lawyer? I can't imagine a lawyer more deserving. Congratulations and thank you for all you've done for the Indiana legal community. Congratulations, Doug. What an honor and so well deserved. We are so happy for you. Congratulations, Doug. Well deserved. On behalf of the Indiana State Bar Association, congratulations, Doug. So well deserved. I can't think of a more deserving person to get this award than Mr. Church. He is awesome. My name is Andrew Manna, partner at Church Church Hiddle and Antrim. Congratulations, Doug, on the Legendary Lawyer Award. Um, a memory for me working with Doug when I first transitioned to Church Church Hill and Antrim 10 years ago 
Uh, there were some logistics and moving item issues of, of getting over here and moving files and moving my desk. And I remember Doug reaching out and telling me everything would be okay and uh, really made me feel good about the, the transition and assisting me with that transition. Um, you know, throughout the course of the years, uh, Doug is always there to step in and help on administrative issues with schools that I work with. Uh, having a lot of history and background of development and real estate. Always appreciate Doug's advice and being available. Congratulations, Doug. Hi, Doug. Rachel Lotion here. Just wanted to take a minute to say congratulations. I'm so fortunate to have someone like you to practice law with, not only to learn law from, but to learn about life and leadership. Again, congratulations, and I can't think of anyone more deserving. Doug, we are so fortunate at CCHA to have all of your leadership for all these years. Thank you so much for all the contributions and commitment you've made to Indiana, our firm, and so many others whose lives you have touched. We're so proud of you and you're so deserving. We love you. We wish you the best. Congratulations. May it please the court, congratulations Doug Church for your legendary lawyer award. Could not happen uh, to a better person, uh, nor is a better person more aptly suitable for such recognition. Um, it just goes to show you that wonderful people uh, turn out to be wonderful lawyers. I will share with you, I ran across this book, uh, the essential little book of great lawyering and, and uh, thought about, about you. Great lawyers look for ways to make legal services more valuable to their clients. Great lawyers give clients more than they pay for. It's a comparison of good lawyers versus great lawyers. Good lawyers do their best to keep promises about when work will be completed. Great lawyers do what they say they will do and get it done when they say they will get it done. In other words, good lawyers try to deliver, great lawyers deliver. You've been delivering great your entire 50 plus career. So in conclusion, congratulations, enjoy. And now I'd like to introduce Chuck Dunlap, President and CEO of the Indiana Bar Foundation, who will present Doug with the Legendary Lawyer Award. Thank you, Nicole. And we have the plaque here. So if you can see it, I'm gonna go ahead and read the inscription on it. The fellows of the Indiana Bar Foundation proudly present the 2020 Legendary Lawyer Award to Douglas D. Church, recognizing that for more than 50 years, He's been engaged in the active practice of law and has manifested adherence to the highest principles and traditions of the legal profession and service to the community dated October 15, 2020. Congratulations, Doug. Thank you. And, and to just end this thing with a little bit of fun. Um, Doug, we do want you to, uh, I have something to say after you, but we do want you to say a few words if, if you'll grace us with them. I'm happy to. Am I on? Yes. You're on. I, I wrote this down and I'm sorry I'm going to read it. It's easier than uh, wiping tears away. <laughs> First of all, I wish to thank the Indiana Bar Foundation for this recognition. And I quickly admit that while I'm humbled and honored, I know that there are many other lawyers that are equally deserving because of their public service and commitment to the highest standards of our profession. I see some of you on the screen, by the way. <laughs> I accept on their behalf as well as my own. A special word of thanks to my very good friends, Mary Sue Rowland, Berkeley Duck, and Steve Carter for their remarks and their friendship over many years. We've engaged in many battles together. I especially wish to thank my family for enduring the time spent away from home and family activities while attending literally countless plan commission, BZA, city and town council meetings, preparing for trials, participating in trials, as well as numerous other meetings with organizations that I've enjoyed. Their tolerance of the time it takes to fully engage in the practice of law or in pursuit of my outside interests is in large part why I am here today. I am forever grateful. I offer similar thanks to my partners past and present who have allowed me the time and privilege of serving in a variety of roles that had nothing to do with billable hours. 
again, without their willingness to let me pursue these outside objectives, I wouldn't be here today. And many thanks go to the many individuals, lawyers, judges, professors, elected officials who have mentored me intentionally and otherwise. There has never been a time in my years of practice that I have not learned lessons, sometimes painfully, from my colleagues and opponents that helped me as I moved ahead of my practice. And for that, I am most grateful. I hope that I have been able to impart some small bit of that accumulated knowledge to others. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, thanks to my clients. What a wonderful profession for someone who enjoys dealing with people, often in their most challenging and stressful moments. It's been a privilege to have had the opportunity to serve you. The Indiana Bar Foundation occupies a special place in my heart because of its mission, providing, among other things, for civics education, a means of offering hope for a positive future for our country. Its support of critical civics programs such as We the People fills a gap in our public education system that is simply irreplaceable. I cannot overstate how important these programs are, and for that reason, I encourage you to make a donation in support of these programs to the IBF. If not to recognize me, then because far more importantly, they are crucial to maintaining an informed, educated, and thoughtful citizenry. Finally, during this era of hostile rhetoric and inflammatory behavior, I would encourage everyone to follow the advice of Shakespeare as he stated in Taming of the Shrew, quote, and do as adversaries do in law. Strive mightily, but eat and drink as friends. Close quote. I only wish it were possible today to eat and drink together with you, my friends. Well, Doug, we're, we're kind of going to try to do that right now for you. I want everybody to grab their water, their coffee, whatever you got. I've got a little kom kombucha here. Um, we want to toast to you, uh, so can't quite drink and eat, but, but we're going to toast. Um, and again, like Doug said, if you would like to give to the Indiana Bar Foundation, check out um, how you can do so um, through the chat page and online. But let's raise a glass to celebrate Doug Church, the 2020 legendary lawyer. Doug, thank you for all that you've done for the community. Thank you for all that you've done for the legal profession in Hamilton County and across the state, and as many mentioned today, across the country and likely across the world. Your commitment to public service, professionalism, and legal ethics has impacted so many people in so many walks of life. Congratulations and cheers. Here, here. Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you so much for attending this afternoon. And again, a recording of today's virtual celebration to honor Doug Church will be posted on the Indiana Bar Foundation's website. That's inbf.org, inbf.org. Again, you can donate to the Indiana Bar Foundation in Doug Church's honor. And because it's before 5.30, I can officially tell you that you can unmute yourself <laughs> because we made it in time. And that will allow you guys the opportunity to congratulate Doug via Zoom. Congratulations, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, congratulations Doug. Congratulations, Doug. Congratulations. Doug. Congratulations, Doug. Congratulations. We really wish we could all be together in the same place. It's just uh, this is the hardest part of this. See my sisters. Well done. <laughs> and Doug, uh, um, I wish mom and dad were here. They would be so proud of you. Congratulations, Doug, and thanks for all you did for me and for Connor Prairie. Thanks. So. Ben and Brent wish you our very best, Doug. Thank you. 
Congratulations, Doug. Yeah, congratulations, uh, Doug, on a life well lived. Thank you, Eric. Michael, congratulations on becoming our newest state bar president. Thank you, but this is this is this is your time. <laughs> congratulations, Doug, for all you've done. I, I, you've done for Shalise and I. Um, I, I, wish th I think we need to get back out on the golf course again, Michael. <laughs> Trust me, you got big shoes to fill. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Yeah, where is she? <laughs> I know she's somewhere in here. <laughs> Congratulations, Doug. So proud of you. Hi, Marty. There's Marty. <laughs> Hi, Doug. Thanks so much for everything you did for me when I was, when I was your partner. I was really honored to serve with you. You're a Doug. good man, Mark. Congratulations, Doug. And I still think of you as the uh, chair of the Young Lawyers section. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Doug. This is Norman. Uh, Ellen already said it so well, but I did say in the chat earlier that we have two legendary uh, Conner Prairie board members on the Zoom call today. I just want to thank what Thank you for what you and Berkeley did to save the prairie all those many years ago. And uh, uh, we're at where we are today because of the stance that you took in the community. And Steve Carter, too. And Steve, friends. that's right. Who snuck in behind me. <laughs> this was location. <laughs> well, else, does anybody else want to talk to Doug? Well, Doug, uh, I'm now, of course, in Marion County, but we're both uh, sons of Delaware County, and so I want to give a shout out to our our common background there. And I know the the bar there in Delaware County is also very proud of your many contributions to Hamilton County and statewide. Thank you, Clay. I'd like to say uh, I can't add anything to what the others have said. They said it much better than I could have, but uh, being a contemporary of yours in the practice of law, you're the kind of lawyer that makes me proud that I'm a member of the profession, and thank you for your work. Same to you, Skip. Thank you. Doug, Bruce here. Don't know if the technology is allowing me to talk. I think it is. We were uh, friends before uh, I ever showed up here at Church Church Hiddle and Antrim, and I I uh, have appreciated your friendship, your mentorship, uh, your open door uh, policy that uh, always uh, uh, certainly was of uh, a great benefit to me in my legal career. And it's been a pleasure to uh, know you in all capacities. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. And I think everybody's ready to go home and have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just so you're aware, Doug, lots of other people have shared their congratulations in the chat. And again, we'll show you all of those. Um, uh, Chuck will show you all of those as well, too. So thank you all so much for joining us today for this virtual honor for Doug Church. Uh, he is the 2020 legendary lawyer, and 2020 is not over yet. So if you do get a chance to uh, meet him for lunch or meet him for coffee and tell him congratulations in person, um, I implore you to do that. On behalf of the Indiana State Bar um, Foundation and State Bar Association, I appreciate your time today and thank you all so much for being here. And Doug, a big congratulations yet again. You all, thank you everybody. Safe travel, stay safe, stay well.